Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. This is question number seven now from the June 2023 Pure Mathematics P4 International A-Level at Excel exam. And this question here is all about related rates of change and also differential equations. So the first question here says a volume V centimeters cubed of a spherical balloon with radius R centimeters is given by the formula V equals four over three pi R cubed. We got to first find the VDR, giving your answer in simplest form. All right, so you have to differentiate this expression with respect to R. So dVdr is equal to, we multiply by the power, so it's three times, four over three times pi, and from the R, we're gonna take one from the power, so it'll be R squared. The three cancels with the three, so we're left with dv dr dv dr is equal to 4 pi r squared so there's the answer to part one one mark simple little differentiation then for part b it says at time t seconds the volume of the balloon is increasing increasing according to the differential equation so they gave us the differential equation so we didn't have to form it like in some cases, um, dv dt equals 900 over 2t plus 3 all squared, where t is greater than or equal to 0, of course. Given that when v equals 0, or v equals 0 when t equals 0, we've got to first solve this differential equation to show that we get this. And then part b says, hence find the upper limit to the volume of the balloon. So please, let's not forget this second part of the question. It's easy to forget that in our when we finished. All right, so now... So we've got to solve the differential equation, dv dt equals 900 times 900 over 2t plus 3 cubed. So we start off with dv dt equals 900 over 2t plus 3 squared. Sorry. All right now, when we're solving a differential equation, okay, we are getting rid of this thing that says d, d something over dt or whatever, right? This part, we're trying to get rid of it. In this case, we want to end up with V as some function of T. So we want to get rid of the dV dt in this case. So to get rid of the dV dt, what we have to do is, if I want to get rid of the dV dt, I have to integrate this with respect to T. And that will give me V. All right, so I've got rid of the dV dt. But what I do to one side of an equation, I must do exactly the same thing to the other side. Otherwise... As we know, the equations will not be um, balanced anymore. So when it, when we add something to both sides of the equation, or subtract things from both sides of the equation, or multiply both sides of the equation by something, or divide both sides of the equation by the same thing, or we square both sides of the equation, or we take the square root of both sides of the equation, whether we take the inverse sign or the sign of both sides of the equation, okay, whether we differentiate both sides of the equation, all right, same kind of thing we have to think about here. We have to also integrate this side of the equation with respect to t as well okay if i in integrate this side with respect to t i must also integrate this side with respect to t and that's exactly what we did here by the way we differentiated this side with respect to r and we differentiated this side also with respect to r we differentiated both sides of the equation with respect to r. That gave us dv dr equals 4 pi r squared. All right. So the same thing we're doing here. We're integrating both sides with respect to t. Now, a lot of people don't think of it like they, that. Uh, I'm sorry. A lot of people don't think of it in this way. However, um, you know, they just go straight ahead and start, um, you know, separating the variables if they have to and stuff. I like to make sure that my students understand what's going on. Why does it become like this? It's because we're integrating both sides with respect to t. So you can think of this becomes now v. Okay, this becomes V for integrate dv dt with respect to t, you're getting it V. And what I'm going to also do, in fact, I'll write, I'll write it down like this. Let me just write it down like this. So this becomes the integral of 1 with respect to V equals, and I'm going to write the constant outside, so 900 times the integral. I'll have 1 over, in fact, I'll get this ready for integration as well because it's to the power of 2. We can't use lin here because it's to the power of 2. It's not to the power of 1, so the numerator is not the differential of the denominator. So I'm going to write this as 2t plus 3 to the power of minus 2 with respect to t. Now, 
Um, the other thing that's a bit different that people do is they just integrate this and they have plus C. Then they use these values and find what C is. Okay, I like to do it in one step. All right, I like to do it putting the limits here. So what I do is I say, okay, we're trying to find what V is in terms of T. So I put them on the same level. And I know that when V is zero, T is also zero. Now that will automatically find the value of C in my working, automatically. All right, so when I integrate this now, okay, integral of one with respect to V is V. So I have V and I have my limits of zero, V and zero. Equals, I have 900. And when I integrate this, I'm going to add one to the power. So I have 2T plus 3 to the power of minus 1. Now, how can I integrate this like this? Because outside this function is a constant, like you say, 1. And the differential of what's inside it is also a constant. So it's a function within a function. And outside the function is multiplying the differential of what's inside it, or something of the same form. All right, so I add 1 to the power. Then I divide by the new power, which is minus 1. And then I also divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 2. And here my limits will be t and 0. So now I have, this will give me v equals. And here I have 900 times. If I simplify this, this is going to be, in fact, I can cancel the, nine, the 2 with the 900. So that gives me 450. Okay, I can take that out. So that's 450 in the minus 1. So I'll, put, I'll say minus 450. Right, that cancels with that and the minus 1. I'll take the minus out. And I'm going to have 1 over 2t plus 3. And I have my limits of t and 0. Okay, so let's work out what this gives us. This is v equals. And I'm going to have minus 450 times. Now I can put in the limits. So I have 1 over 2t plus 3 minus 1 over, that's 2 times 0 plus 3, which is 3. Okay, now remember, we have to show it becomes this. So it looks like we have to make this into one fraction. So you have V equals minus 450 times. Let's make this into one fraction. So this is going to be 3 times 2T plus 3. And that will be 3 minus, and in brackets, 2T plus 3. Okay, so I can say V is equal to, that's minus 450 times. Now this is 3 minus 2T minus 3. So the 3 minus 3 is 0. I'm left with minus 2t over 3 times 2t plus 3. Now the 3 can cancel with the minus 450, giving me minus 150. And then when I multiply those together, I get plus 300. So I say v equals, that's 300 over, uh, 300t, sorry, that's 300t over 2t plus 3. And I think that's exactly what we had to show. 300t over 2t plus 3. That's right. So there's your answer to part 1. Okay, then it says, find the upper limit to the volume of the balloon. Okay, so we want to find what the volume of the balloon is. Okay, uh, when we want to find what happens to the volume of the balloon when t is approaching a very high number. The upper limit will be where, what happens when the, according to this model, when t approaches a very high number. Okay, so what we could do is we could just take this. Okay, this is like a little shortcut thing. You can just put in your calculator 300. Okay, um, and this is two times. Okay, something. So let, let me type plus two times. Um, what I'll do is I'll put 300 times let's say a million a very big number right so that's one two three four five six zeros over two times a million six zeros one two three four five one more six plus three and see what it gives us it gives us 149.999 it looks like it's to be 150 if i make this even bigger if i add some more zeros to this and up there as well one, two, three, four. It gets closer and closer to 150, okay? So it will basically approach 150, okay? So we can see from just doing that calculator that the, the limit of V is going to be 150 centimeters cubed, okay? Now, how can you show this algebraically? Okay, what I would do is I would go back to here and I will um, rewrite it. I will look at it like this, actually. Okay, t plus 3, 
Okay, so you have minus 450 over 2t plus 3 plus 1 third. Okay, that's how it was before we added them together. All right, now, um, you see what's going to happen here is <coughs> as t gets, and that's going to be, sorry, not my plus one third. That's going to be here, uh, plus 450 over 3, which is 150, sorry. Okay, so this is what we can say the volume is equal to. It's equal to this expression when I take it from here, right? So this is minus 450 over 2t plus 3 plus 150. Okay, minus, minus 450 times minus 130 is plus 150. So if we look at the expression in this form here, we can say as, as t approaches a very large number, then 2t plus 3 also approaches a very large number, right? This part here. So therefore, minus 450 over 2t plus 3 is going to be minus 450 over a very large number, which approaches 0. So this approaches 0, so what we're left with, 150. Okay, that's the reason why 150 is the limit. Now, this question here, it just says, Hence, find the upper limit to the volume of the balloon, okay? I mean, if you want to be complete, then showing this little step here would be something which you could do. But if you just substitute the values in like I showed you, very large number instead of t, in this expression, it gives you the answer, okay? So I guess we could even do it from here because um, as t approaches a very large number, then 2t plus 3 so that would be like 300 times a very large number over two times a very large number. And the plus three makes very little difference to it eventually. So it would be like 300 over two, which is 150. Okay, you can think of it like this, but this is more complete. Okay, this, this way here. So you can see that this whole thing approaches zero. Okay, as T becomes really big. So it'll be 150 minus something really small, which gives you 150, all right? So as T gets really huge, then this, the volume approach is 150. That's what um, we can understand from this, um, from this question. All right, so that's seven part A and seven part B, one and two. Now we're gonna go on to seven part C. It says, find the radius of the balloon at time equals three, giving your answer in centimeters to three significant figures. Okay, so now, um, when time equals three, we wanna find the radius. Now we know that um, the volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So if I want to find the radius, I've got to rearrange this formula. So the radius is going to be 3 times the volume over 4 pi. 3 times the volume over 4 pi and cube rooted. So if I find the volume when t equals 3, I can replace that there and I've got the radius when t equals 3. So the volume when t equals 3 is going to be 300 times 3 over 2 times 3 plus 3 which is 900 over 6 plus 3, 9, which is 100 centimeters cubed. So the volume when t equals 3 this, therefore the radius when t equals 3 is going to be the cube root of 3 times 100 over 4 pi. Simple as that. So the radius when time equals 3, we can just put that in our calculator. So we have the cube root of 300 divided by 4 pi. And that gives us 2.8794, 2.8794, dot, 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 and they want it to three significant figures, so 2.88. So the radius is 2.88 centimeters. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, in case I need this again, I'm gonna store this as A. Okay, so I've stored this answer. Now, part D. Okay, so we've done C. Now part D. Find the rate of increase of the radius of the balloon at t equals 3. So when it says the rate of increase of the radius, that's dr dt. We've got to find dr dt. Now what we're given, what we know, is an expression for dv dt. All right? And we have to end up with dr dt. Okay? We know what r is when t equals 3. All right? So that will help us um, most probably. So... If I want to end up with dr dt, okay, then I have to have here 
DT. Well, DR DT. I've got DV DT. I have to have DR and DV. Okay, because I have to end up with the RDT. So the DVs have to cancel out. I'll have to have the DR on top. Now, I know what DV DR is. We found that already. In fact, we can find it again. It's very easy. 3 times 4 over 3, which is 4 pi R squared. So I know what this is. I know what this is. Okay. And um, I know that at T equals 3, R equals 2.88 centimeters. So I, I can, I, I've got everything I need actually here. So DR DT is dv dt, which is 900 over 2t plus 3 squared, times dr dv, now dv dr is 4 pi r squared, so dr dv is the reciprocal of that, so it's 1 over 4 pi r squared. So I know that t equals 3, and I know that r equals 2.88, so I saved the exact value of my calculator anyway. So therefore we can say dr dt is equal to 900 over 2 times 3 plus 3 squared times 1 over 4 times pi times 2.88 squared. Okay, so that should give us our answer. So if I stick that in my calculator, I have, in fact, that's, in fact, the last answer I wrote down, I got in here was this, so I'm going to just use answer. So 900 over 2 times 3, which is 6 plus 3, 9, 9 squared is 81, so that's 81. Okay, times 1 over, we have 4 times pi, times answer, the last answer I got, which was that R value. And that gives us, ah, answer squared. Sorry about that, that should be squared, right, 4 pi R squared. Forgot that. Um, hold on, that's messed up. Why? Because it takes my last answer. So I've got to do this and just get, get back to what I had before, which was A. That's, that's safer. That gives us the answer, 0 0.106644. 0 0.106644. So we can say, therefore, the rate and change of radius with respect to time is 0, 0.0 to two what? To, to two significant figures. So it's going to be 0 0.11. Yeah, 0 0.11, and this is centimeters per second, or better to write it this way, centimeters per second. So there's the answer to that last part, that's part D. I think that was a complete question, yes. So that's the answer to this part D of this question number seven from the January 2023 IAL Pure Mathematics P4 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from um, this topic of, um, I guess it's differential equations. We put it in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And if you would like to uh, watch a video showing you how to use my channel effectively to find what you need, watch the video that will appear at the top here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.